In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to draw the vectors required for the lily leaf molding. We're going to show you how to use the polyline tool and create curves as you're drawing along without interrupting your workflow. And with the resulting vectors, we're going to show you how to make the molding in a different tutorial. To get started, we're going to open up a new instance of our software. And we're going to create a new file. That's going to be a single sided job and we're going to make the width of this 12 and the height is going to be four and the thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. We're going to zero off our material surface and we're going to set our datum to the center. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're drawing or designing a piece like this. And then we can go ahead and click OK. Now for this exercise, we're going to use our grid snapping. So to turn that on, we're going to go up here and turn on the grid snapping. You'll see that it's off right now because it's not highlighted in blue. But when I left click it, it's going to turn it on. Now the next thing I'd like you to notice is that inside your job space, we have this grid of dots. And each one of these dots has an exact spacing between it. Now in order to figure out what that spacing is, we need to go up to edit and go down to snap options or we could have pressed f4 on our keyboard and we'll just click that and you'll see that right here we have our snap to grid is turned on and our grid spacing is set to a quarter inch so between each one of these dots whether you're going left to right or up and down is a quarter inch which makes it really easy when you're trying to design something that needs to have exact spacing everything else here is perfectly fine and so we're just going to go ahead and click ok now, because this is going to be used to make a molding, this first set of vectors we're going to be making, we need to think about it as a set of drive rails and a cross section for the actual molding. Now, we're going to create two vectors, one along the bottom and one along the top, and they're going to be our drive rails. And then we're going to put in a couple other ones in the middle here that are going to help us to draw our cross section. So first of all, we're going to go over to our draw polyline tool and we're going to click that. And because we've got that snapping turned on, you can see what happens as soon as I go into the 2D view that my pointer wants to snap to these quarter inch increments here around my job. So if I go down to my bottom corner, I can drop a node there and I can stretch it way out to the other side and drop a node there. And then I can press escape on my keyboard because I'm all finished. Now what I want to do is I want to copy this to the top of my job space here because these will be our two drive rails so I'm going to select this and when I go to drag it up I'm going to drag it from this end I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and I'm going to pull it up I'm going to hold down my control key because that's going to tell the software to make a copy and I'm going to drop it up here at the top and then let go so now I have two vectors one at the top and one at the bottom that are exactly the same now my next set of vectors I want to create is going to be one that will be exactly a half inch from the bottom and then three quarters of an inch from the top. So we're going to select this vector, click it again, hold down the control key, drag it up a quarter inch and then another quarter inch, that's a half inch. We're going to grab this top one up here, again, click it again to have it selected. We're going to drag it down, holding down the control key, one, two, three, so that's three quarters of an inch and then let go. And we're ready to go now. And so now I can just go ahead and off click that in the middle. The next thing I want to do is draw a rectangle. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool and I'm going to start here in the corner. It's going to snap to the corner and I'm going to drag it down to the bottom and I'm going to snap it there. So you can see that when I let go of this, the dimensions in my draw rectangle dialog are set to a quarter inch wide and four inches tall and it's snapped to where I want it to be. Now I can close this down. So in order to use this as a cross section for a two rail sweep, we are going to need to have an open vector. So I want to actually delete out this span here that makes up the left hand side of my rectangle. So with that selected, I can either go into node mode over here by choosing node mode here in my edit objects, or I could, could have pressed N on my keyboard. So I'm going to right click over top of this span and I'm going to choose delete span. Now you'll see that I could have chosen to use D as a quick key if I wanted to, but for now I'm just going to click delete. And there we have it. So now I have just the three spans, the top, the right, and the bottom. Now what I want to do is to give it a little bit of shape so that this molding isn't just a square block. So to do that, I need to insert in a couple nodes. So I'm going to hover over this line and because I'm in node mode, I could just simply right click and go down to insert a point 
or I could have chosen I on the keyboard. So down here, I'll do that. I'll just press I on my keyboard and there we have it. Now I'm going to select this node and drag it down and snap it to that line. And same here, I'm going to do it with that one. Now what I want to do is actually move these two nodes out a little bit. So I have sort of an angled shape to this cross section. So let's box select these two nodes and then drag them out a quarter inch. And there we have it. The next thing I want to do is actually add a bump to the bottom and a nice smooth curve in the center and then a bump to the top. So in order to do that, I need to convert these lines into beziers or curves. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go and choose to bezier or I could have used B on my keyboard. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to grab this control handle and snap it there and grab this control handle and snap it there. I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the bottom. So right click on that, choose to bezier and I'm going to snap this handle there and this one there. So now I have those two bumps on the bottom that are exactly the same height. So let's right click on this and we're going to turn this to a bezier here as well. And we're going to grab this handle right here and we are going to move it out to right about there. And what that's going to ensure is that this bump here isn't any prouder than that bump, but it gives me a nice smooth curve like you see there. And now I'm all done with node mode so I can press escape on my keyboard. I'm just going to slide my view over a little bit and I'm going to move this vector out of the way off of my job just over here for later because I don't need that anymore. So by clicking F on my keyboard, I can zoom back out to see my whole job space. For the next part of this, we're not going to need our grid snapping turned on anymore. So I'm going to go up there and unselect the grid snapping. That means I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to make sure that my smart snapping is turned off as well. And it is because it's not highlighted in blue. And I want to make sure that my geometry snapping is turned on. And it is because, again, it's highlighted in blue. Now I want to check one more setting underneath my snap options. So we're going to go back to edit and down to snap options. Or again, I could have pressed F4 if I wanted to. And I'm looking down here at my snapping radius. Now, when it comes to drawing organic shapes, you want the software to drop the node where you click and not snap to things that might be slightly out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this all the way down from 10 all the way down to 4. Okay, and that will ensure that where I drop my node, it's going to be where it stays. And then I can go ahead and click OK. And we're ready to start our next bit of drawing. So what we're hoping to draw here is a lily on this side of our job space that we're going to mirror over from left to right, and then we're going to mirror top to bottom. So we get this lily that kind of wraps around this way and comes down and then goes back around like this in the end. So to get that started, we're going to only draw one half of it, and that way we can mirror it. So to do that, we're going to start off with our polyline tool again. And we're going to drop a node here in the center, okay, at our X and Y center. And then we're going to pull it out and we're going to end up stopping somewhere around here. But I haven't dropped or I haven't pressed my left mouse button yet. But when I do, what I'm doing, I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to modify my line into a bezier just by holding down that button. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to hold down my left mouse button. And I'm going to pull it out and you see right away it's already turned into a curve for me. So I kind of want to give it a shape, something like this. So I want my lily stalk to kind of wrap up around there somewhere. Now I can let go. And then I'm going to drop another one somewhere around here, maybe. And I'll do the same thing, hold down my mouse button and kind of shape it to what I want. It's kind of close. Then I'm going to go back down to here. I'm going to do the same thing, maybe somewhere around here. Pull it out and stretch it. And then I'm going to drop my last node somewhere around this spot here. And I want to end up with my ending, something like that. And then I can let go and I can press escape on my keyboard and I'm all done. Now that's not particularly pretty at this point, but what I can do now is I can go into node mode. So with this line selected, I can go into node mode. That's N on my keyboard. And now I have control of all of my nodes and also the control handles here. So I can shape this curve to whatever I'd like it to be. So the first change I'm going to make is I'm going to move this above my line like that. And what that will do is it'll ensure that when I come down here and it hooks up with the other, with a copy of itself, it's going to be a nice smooth transition. It won't be jarring. It'll be nice and smooth. 
Then what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit nicer. The nice arc that kind of comes around like that. And then I'm going to stretch this fella down like so. Maybe move him out a little bit. That's pretty good. And then I'll do the same with this one here. Maybe move it back a little bit. And again, I'm just trying to get a nice shape. We'll put him there and grab that control handle and do that. Now, if we want to get these control handles straight across from each other, the best way to do that is to select this node. And if I press Y on my keyboard, it will align the control handles along my Y axis, so across this way. And if I want these to be lined up on my X axis, I can just press X, and there we have it. And that lines those up. And now I can really have a mess around with how these are going to look. And this is a very, very iterative, organic process. Um, it might take a little while to get it right. It's all very subjective in how you want your lily to look. So I'm going to try and get it pretty close to the way I'd like to see it look. Now, if I only want to control this handle here, I just need to click on that little control handle, and then I can do that all by itself independently. If I want to see what this line looks like without my control handle showing, I can just right click and you'll see that my pointer is still in node mode. But what I can do is I can get a really good idea of how this shape is and whether it's smooth enough for what I want. And you know what, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks great. Now the next bit is we need to actually create a lily leaf here at the end. So to do that, again, we're gonna go back into Draw Poly Line Tool, and I'm gonna do exactly what I did for this line. I'm gonna drop a node. I'm gonna come out to where I think the other end needs to be, hold down my mouse pointer, and shape it roughly to what I want it to be in the end. It's not gonna be perfect. Now along the bottom here, I'm not really sure where I want it to connect. Oh, you'll see right about there, it's actually snapped to a node. So I'm going to drop it just slightly down from that, right about there. Again, I'm going to hold my mouse pointer in. Looks pretty good. Then I'll draw another one over here somewhere, do the same thing. And then I'm going to end it up back where I started from, right there. Now that looks terrible, but again, I can press escape on my keyboard. I can choose that polyline. I can press N on my keyboard to go into node mode. And now I can work this into the shape that I would like it to be. So the first thing I want to do is I want to fix this one right there, which looks terrible. Let's bring him out there somewhere. This guy here I want to bring like that. Move this handle up there. I need to move this like that. Pull that one down a bit. Maybe pull this over a little bit there. And like I mentioned before, this is very an iterative process that you're going to need to work through. I couldn't see my control handle. I see it's slightly tucked underneath there. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit and bring that out using my scroll wheel and also my sliders here. You can get that and get a really good look at what it looks like. Something like that. It's not too bad. Now this node right here is bothering me a bit. I want to zoom in and drag it down and just put it on top of that line right about there. And then I, instead of it being smooth, I want it to actually, I want to be able to take this control handle and bend it so it's not smooth in there. So I right click on this node, I can turn off smoothing or I could have pressed S on my keyboard. And then when I grab this control handle, you'll see what happens. I can kind of make it come to a point like the bottom of a leaf would be. Zoom back out again just a little bit. Let's bring that around. Let me stretch that a bit that way. And we're going to take a look at that and see if it's kind of what I'd like to have. Let's grab that control point, maybe bring it up a little bit like that. You know what? It's getting to the point that I'm pretty happy. Sometimes if you play around too much, you end up making too much of a mess. So let's go ahead and right click off of that for a second so we can take a look at that and see what we think. It's still not right up here. I think I want it to come up a little bit higher. So we're going to click that and we're just going to pull this guy out just a little bit. Maybe I want to pull it back and maybe move this one down just a little. Right click again. I think that's almost there. I'm going to go ahead and 
and select that line that we're going to use for the stem. And I'm just going to make a teeny tiny adjustment here. That might get me to where I want to be. And I think that's pretty good. This is still a little bit too wide. So let's select that again and maybe pull that down a bit. Pull that over a little bit like that. Yeah, I think I like that. That looks really good. Now for our next step, what we want to do is we need to actually separate this leaf into two different sections. So we're going to need these two sections because we are going to use our shape creation tool to actually build up the components that we need to make this leaf in the end. So the best way to do this is going to be to go back to my selection tool. And I am going to choose my stem and I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go down to copy to a new layer. And I'm going to call this new layer edit, E-D-I-T, and we are just going to click OK. Now, if we have a look under in our layers manager, you're going to see that we now have one that was our default layer that was set up when we first started this job. And then we have one called edit, which is great. And we've made a copy of the stem vector onto the edit layer. So we have two stems actually laying on top of each other. The next thing we want to do is take the leaf and we want to right click on that and we want to move it to the edit layer. Then we're going to go back up to our layers manager and we're going to turn off layer one and we're going to make edit the edit layer, our active layer, and then we're going to click back here. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to remove this stem because we don't need this stock. We only want the piece that's inside the seam of our leaf here. So we can go ahead and use our interactive trim tool. We can click that and I'm just simply going to go ahead and snip that off. Then we can close that down. So now we have two vectors, one closed vector and one single vector here all by itself. And we need to turn this closed vector into two halves. So to do that easily, we're going to go into node mode again. And we're going to hover over top of this node right here. We're going to right click and we're going to choose cut. So it's going to separate that into two parts at this spot right there. Nothing has changed, but when we go down to do this one and we hover over it and we choose cut or C on our keyboard, you'll see we now have two different parts of our leaf. Okay, let's go back to our selection tool. Now what we want to do is because we need this line to be a common line to finish off both these shapes. We're going to select it and we're going to right click and we're going to go up to copy and that copies that line to the clipboard. And then holding down our shift key, we're going to select this upper piece of our leaf and we're going to connect these two together. And we're going to use the join open vectors command over here under our edit objects. And you'll see right here that it tells us that we have two open vectors selected our tolerance is going to be, so any nodes that are within 0 0.004 of each other will be connected together. And the result of this is going to give us one closed vector. And that's what we want. So we can just join that now. Let's close that down. Now we can go ahead and paste our vector back in place that we just copied a minute ago. So let's paste that. Hold down our shift key. We're going to have that center line and also this outside bump. And we're going to do the same to this. Again, two open vectors any common nodes that are within this tolerance to each other. And that's going to create in the end one closed vector for us. And we can join that together and close that down. Now we're done with this particular layer. So we're going to go up here. We're going to right click on edit and we're going to choose to delete. And what it's going to ask us to do is it knows that we have data on this layer. So what shall we do with that data? Well, we're going to move that data to layer one and we're going to click OK. And now if we go up here and we turn back on our layer one, you'll see that we have our two parts of our leaf and they're back on the same layer as our stem here. Now, one last thing we want to do with our leaf is we want to copy this particular bump right here. So we're going to click on that again so our control handles show up. We're going to hold down our control key and just scale it down a little bit. Holding down the control key will make a copy to right about there. We're going to put it back in the middle again. We're going to rotate it just a little bit and you'll see why we're going to do this when we get to the modeling section. I'm going to use my arrow keys to move this around just to put it into place or nudge it into place. I think that looks okay. We're just going to off click that and go back to our selection tool. 
and that looks pretty good. And that pretty much finishes up what we need to make the leaf. Now there's still some bits that we're gonna need to make the stem. So let's go ahead and start to develop those. So our stem is kind of a round shape that's gonna go from big all the way around to a tinier cross section in here somewhere. So we're gonna need two cross sections for that. So let's start off with a circle because that's kind of the shape that we need for a stem. Let's choose that. And we're gonna make sure that our diameter is gonna be set to 0.375. And then we can just click into our job space and it'll create a circle for us. Close that down. We're gonna go into node mode and we're gonna hover over the bottom parts of this. Now in order to use the extrude and weave feature that we're gonna to use to create this stem, we need to have an open vector and we only really want half of this. So hovering over top of this span, I can right click and go down to delete or I can just hover over this span and press D on my keyboard. Now that's great, let's go back to our pick tool. Now what I wanna do is I wanna hold down my control key and drag it over here. Holding down the control key will make a copy. And I wanna scale this down a little bit. So I'm gonna go over to my set selected object size. We're gonna choose that. With the link XY turned on, we're gonna go ahead and change our width to be 0 0.03. So 0 0.03, and we're gonna hit apply and close, and we'll off click, and we've got this little tiny half circle right there that we're gonna use a little later on in a different tutorial to make our stem. So let's just press F on our keyboard, and we can just off click everything, and there we have it. All the bits that we need to make this molding. Now the last thing we wanna do is save this off so we have it available for us to actually do our modeling in the next tutorial. So let's go up here to File, and choose Save As, and we're gonna navigate over to your tutorial file, call this file Lily Leaf Molding Dash Drawing, and click Save. And now we're ready to go ahead and look at our next tutorial on how to turn this into an actual 3D piece of molding.